the Boss Man Show, new coach, Central Michigan, the Chippewas, Tony Barbie. You know him from UTEP and Auburn. He's up there in the MAC now. Coach Barbie, how you doing, man? Man, I'm doing great, JR. How you doing this morning? Coach, I can't complain, man. Coach, let's tell us about the opportunity with the Chippewas, man. You know, you was with Cali, Kentucky, man, having a good a good thing over there with those guys. What about the opportunity to say to you, hey, I want to get back in and get my own program again? Well, it's just it's one of those things. I had been a uh, I've been in the business a long time. Got an opportunity to be a head coach at, at UTEP and Auburn, and, and, and leading your own program is, is something that's special. But it's one thing when you're when you're assistant coach and you're offering up all the ideas and opinions, but you don't get to make that final decision. And when you get a chance to sit in that seat and you get that opportunity to run your own program, build it in your own likeness, your own philosophies um, on the game, on on developing players, developing people, and it's. It's how you want to do it, when you want to do it, and you got the final say. It's a, it's a very, very unique experience to have ownership in your own program. And, and being back with Cal in Kentucky for the last seven years was fantastic. Uh, you know, he's a friend. He's a mentor. He's uh, somebody I'll always call coach. Um, I played for him back in the old UMass days. So I've known him for the better part of my life. And uh, outside of my dad, there had been a, a, a man in my life who's had a bigger influence on me as a person uh, and professionally in this business. But – the opportunity, um, you know, we had a lot of success in Kentucky the last seven years. I had a few other opportunities um, to become a head coach of Division One again that I turned down. This wasn't the right time, right place for me and my family where we were uh, with my kids at the time. But now my kids are older. My daughter's in college. My son's a sophomore now in high school. And uh, this was the right opportunity at the right time. And, Coach, you're the, the MAC conference coach. The MAC is one of the premier – Mid-major conferences out there, man. The, the basketball in that league is tough from top to bottom. No easy nights in that conference, coach. No, not at all. You've got, you know, I've always said about the, the MAC has, has been one of those leagues um, like the Atlantic 10, like Conference USA. Those those leagues that in the history of the game always were multiple bid conferences. Um, and, and I think those days are coming back. And the teams in this league, everybody has had a moment or two in terms of High level of success, multi NCAA tournament bids. Central Michigan had its its time with the Denton and Marlin teams. Chris came in led teams. Um, you had, you know, all the kids stayed. Most definitely, coach. I'm asking this man for his recruiting. Jerry, coach. You still got me? I said, I got you, coach. Lost the sound somehow. Coach, you can hear me now, coach. Yeah, you still got me? Yeah, I got you, coach. You got me, coach? Yeah, I got you now. Okay. Yeah, good good good. Yeah, it froze on us. It froze on us. Yeah, yeah, it's all good, coach. Yeah, man. Uh, I go saying, man, like in the in the recruiting piece of it in the Midwest, there, coach. You can get anybody you want to who wants to play in a good league and can really want a ball because in the MAC, man, that man, it's tough. My my buddy, like I said, Jack owns all those guys, man. Like I feel like, man, everybody can't go to a Power Five, a Power Seven conference, right? So you got to play in a league like the MAC and still show yourself. Because guess what? If you if you're a baller, coach, you know, if you're a baller, they'll find you. You've been in the league, or you'll be overseas somewhere playing, and making them good money. Well, re recruiting is all about relationships, and you know, being in this business for 25 years, having worked from everywhere from Wyoming to UMass to, to Memphis to Kentucky to El Paso, Texas um, to Auburn, I've, I've recruited everywhere from the from Maine to Miami to from DC to LA to Australia, South America, Europe, Africa. This thing is all about relationships, and and we're going to build our foundation of recruiting in our own backyard in the state of Michigan, in the Midwest, 
Um, but the relationships I have from all those places I talked about, the staff of people I put around me, we're going to be able to recruit some of the best players in the world, not just in, in the Midwest. And coach, how's it been recruiting your team now? The guys you know we have coaching change, guys may want to leave and stay. How's it building every relationship and rapport with the guys on the roster right now? It, no, it's been great. That's that's the the it's why we do this. It's the, it's why we're in this business. Um to to support, to grow young men and take them from young men to, to men so now they can go on their own and lead successful and productive lives as as citizens. Um but the number one priority is, is always is recruiting. It's the lifeblood of any program. And, you know, the first priority when I got the job was recruiting the current team. It's just the nature of the business. You're going to have some attrition when a new coach takes over. Um, styles and all those things. That What they say, styles make fights. I mean, oh, it's yeah. the same thing in coaching. Yeah. Some players don't fit the coach's style or vice versa. So, you know, there's been some young men who decided to, to enter the portal in the program, and we've been happy to help them because it's about them. It's not about me. And then at the same time, we've, we've, you know, we've signed um, several new players that we're really, really excited about that have chosen to, to join the team. There's only a few of them I could talk about. Kevin, Kevin Miller from the city of Chicago, uh, Cam Healy, a transfer from Albany, uh, Brian Taylor, a young man from Detroit um, who played at UIC, who was transferring here. And we got a couple other commitments that we, we can't talk about yet because the paperwork isn't back, but we're building the, we're building a foundation. I inherited some fantastic players. Um, Andre Polk, a young man on the roster, 6'11 kid from the city of Detroit, got all the skills that says he can be an NBA player. Now it's about development. Now it's about commitment. Now it's about buying into the culture that I'm going to establish, that it's going to be about defense first and toughness, mental toughness, physical toughness. That's what win, wins games. But there's going to be his growth as a person, growth as a player, uh, Devontae Lane, a fantastic point guard. I inherited a veteran. Um, a lot of good pieces in place. Now we're put, adding um, some some players that, that can fit older with the new. And we're going to have to mess this thing quickly because you know, uh, they don't get a whole lot of time nowadays. We're going to put this roster together quickly, get them to play together and, and compete at a high level so we can compete for the MAC championship. And, Coach, speaking of that, man, the player development is so key. Cause this summer, you have actually have on campus. Last year, guys are on their own devices, trying to work out via Zoom. So now, player development, being on the court, individual drills, lifting weights together so you can get them strong enough to go through this, this grind coming up here in October. It's not about having the guys on campus in year one of your program to really set up the tone and culture here day one. Oh, it's a it's, uh... – it's, uh, once we get them here, we'll be bringing them in the 1st of June. We'll have all the returning players back. We'll have all the, the new players and coming players in. And It's about building that bond, building that, that family atmosphere, uh, building that, that will to win this summer. Like I said, that starts in the, in the skill development, that starts in the weight room, that starts with the conditioning, um, all those different things, doing some different activities with the guys outside of the basketball so they get to know me. As a person, basketball is what I do. It's my passion. It's my love, but it's not who I am. I want them to know me. I want them to know what I'm about. I want them to know my family and, and vice versa. I want them to know each other as teammates, as people, as friends, not just somebody that they see every day, but only during practice or only during games. If we're going to build a, a true uh, family where we're playing for each other and the name on the front of the jersey instead of the name on the back of the jersey, We've got to build that this summer, and we're going to do that in every aspect of our, our summer workout program. Um, but it'll incorporate a lot of different things, and we're going to have fun, too. It's going to be hard work. They know it's going to be a grind. But like I've always said, when you start to enjoy the grind as much as you do that destination, that's when you're going to have success. Everybody wants that carrot at the end of the oh, – yeah. that, that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. But if you don't enjoy that daily grind of, of repetition, of working hard, of lifting weights, of making your body grow, um, of growing your game, of growing your, your IQ basketball-wise, watching tape, studying film, all those things, those things go into that end result. So we're going we're gonna to work on teaching these guys through the culture of enjoying that process every single day because then the end result is what everybody wants, that they want to be cutting down nets and hanging banners, and that's yeah. what we're going to be at the end of the day.
And coach, you kind of mentioned something about watching film. I think that's where young men kind of lose a little bit, coach, because, you know, you show them on film, can they did not take the film from the practice court to the game court? I feel like that's where the gap is. You know, you watch your own film, you call out a rotation, call out where you saw open man slip the screen here, but sometimes they don't bring from the film session, practice court to the game court. How do you get a young man to take that tunnel from the film from practice into the game court there? Well, it's, it's part of growing as a player. Um, it, it's, you know, today's player is different. They, when they watch tape, they want to see themselves on tape. They want to, they want to watch themselves. They don't want to watch somebody else, but exactly. so we'll, do, we'll, do a, we'll do a combination. We'll do a mix to the, of, of breaking down our practice films and then we'll incorporate it with um, some film of some NBA guys, whether it's an offensive action, an offensive move, a defensive rotation or slide or something like that. We'll, we'll cut it and splice it together so they can see themselves with other good players that they're trying to emulate or a place they're trying to get to like the NBA. And I'll tell you, the, the best players that I've been around are the ones that, that have curious minds. And it's not just through playing, practicing, individual work, cones, tennis balls, drills. It's studying tape and studying themselves to make themselves better. And it's studying other players that they're, where they're trying to get to and studying their game, their habits. Um, that's how you learn. That's how you grow. And that's, that, that's those players with curious minds. Those are the best players in, in the history of the game. But even currently today, those are the ones that you see grow at a rapid rate. And Coach Maskis, man, at what point you want to begin the coaching? I know like, my dad's a coach, and, you know, my dad wanted me to go that route. I said, no, nah, I would have been on, on the radio, Dad. That's not me. I'll cut somebody out being a coach. Like, <laughs> I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be good at that. So, but at what point did you decide you want to get the coaching and help young men as being your, your, your life's journey and your life's path? Well, you know, it was at, it was an early age. Um, my dad was uh, an athlete. He played basketball with Oscar Robertson in high school in Indianapolis at Christmas Addicts High School. He was a football player, so he was setting all the screens for the Big O um, in, in high school. But he went on to play football at Tennessee State. Um, and then when he, he when he hung up the cleats and the helmet finally and started a family, he coached me and my, my two other brothers in every sport that we did. Basketball, football, baseball, golf. I mean, he was coaching us in everything. Um, I played for a fantastic high school coach and Steve Kaufman in Indianapolis, uh, North Central High School. Um, and then obviously, ultimately playing for, um, like I talked about, my friend, my mentor, but somebody I'll always call coach. I, I was fortunate around to be around a lot of great coaches. And yes, it was through basketball that I saw how they were affecting me and my teammates as people. I've always said that about sports in general, but obviously I'm in basketball, that as a coach, you have this great vehicle to help young men grow as people and teach yes. them life lessons that will ultimately – because the air is coming out of that basketball now. JR, you know that. That air is coming out of the ball sooner rather than later for most of us. Um, and so it's in preparing these guys through this sport for life after the game. That's, that's what drives me. That's what motivates me. Um, and, yeah, I'm a competitor. Um, I want to win. Nobody wants to win more than me. Um, my wife, she still, we've been married now for 21, 22 years. She still won't play Monopoly with me. Oh, based wow. on the Monopoly game we played. We were engaged 21 years ago. I think she beat me, and I might have threw Park Place or something, or Boardwalk at her when she beat me. So she refuses to play Monopoly with me. It tells you how competitive I am. But the biggest thing is developing people. That's why we do this. Ultimately, we want to win. We want to compete at a high level. We want to cut down nets. We want to hang banners. Uh, but it's developing people. So, they go on to represent themselves and their families for the rest of their lives. Well, Coach, me and your dad have something in common. Tennessee State, that's my alma mater, too. So that's why I went to school. Uh, Frankie Allen, I met him when I was four years old, Coach. Frankie Allen. Carlos Rodgers, Anthony Mason, those guys. I got hooked on TSU. That's why I went to school there myself. And Will Jones, there when I was there, he was as a, as a GA. And Penny Collins, I knew him for years as well. So seeing those two guys who I run around with, I having jobs. I was like, what if I mean radio, you are coaches. So we all do what we want to do. We all made it happen. <laughs> You're going to tell me some of those those real stories about Penny. I want to hear the real ones, not the, not these basketball stories. I, I got you. I, off air, coach, I got you. <laughs> okay, we can't say it. Okay, I got you. We can't say it on there. I got it. Yeah, can't say it on there. I don't want to get him in trouble. <laughs> oh, me I, got trouble. I got you. Or you do. Yes, sir. Coach, I got two more for you, man. You got that right. And you know what, coach? It's funny. Willie Jones is the same guy he was 
12 years ago when I met, met the guy. Like, he's still that intense guy, man. And seeing him in the A&T now and Penny back at Tennessee State, you know, it's like, wow. All these guys I've known all these years. And Coach Sire as well, you know, with his basketball camps, you know. And, 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 and so, like, man, it's like seeing these guys I've known all these years, it made me want to go big, go TSU. I've been in Atlanta. My mom's in Nashville, Nashville, I'm doing the summer. So, right I'm over there. So, like, okay, I can go to Georgia State, Georgia, what? I'm going to go to Tennessee State up there with, with Nashville and enjoy that experience. It was fun, man. Yeah, my, my dad was over – when he played football at Tennessee State, he was over there with Ed Tutal Jones, the legendary Hall of Fame coach. John McClendon was the basketball coach at Tennessee State at the time, and my dad knew him well. I mean, it was a small community at the time. And I remember when we were kids growing up in Indianapolis, we'd drive get in the car, drive down to Nashville. He'd take us around campus – Telling us all the war war stories, he had, I still got all of the Tennessee his Tennessee State yearbooks uh, in my in my house in my office. I mean, big old things from back in the early '60s. So, man, it's a uh, it, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a blessing when you're when you you have a, a, a father in your life who has that in his background and can help help teach you something and get you reaching for something that he attained at a at a, at a certain age. And so, you know, he was a uh, you know, he was a guy that 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 you know motivated motivated me to get in this get into coaching because of how you can help young men. Coach, I have two more for you, Coach. What is your favorite place to eat here in, in Atlanta? What's your favorite place to eat here when you come to town, Coach? Man, I I got so I got so many. Um, oh goodness, I was just there. My son, my son plays AAU. Um, we were just there about a month ago. Um, you know. I, I'm a, I'm a foodie, you know, like I said, my, I like to eat, right? The belly's big. I like to eat. So my players, my players are going to eat, you know, I, I'm a Papa Do's is one of my favorite restaurants. So okay. wherever I go, I got to find my Papa Do's. So I, I hit the Papa Do's there a couple of times. Ultimately, you know, obviously you always got to hit the, the, the legendary spot. So I stopped over at the varsity, got me a couple of hot dogs and some onion rings at the varsity. There was one around the corner. And then, uh, Oh, no, it's it's, it's crawling the, the soul food spot that, that was in the airport forever. That was always one of my favorite favorite stops um, in town when I come to Atlanta, hitting the, hitting the soul food spot. So, no, there's so many great restaurants in that city. You, you can't go wrong with any of them. Well, Coach, when you come to town, I'll take you to 10 Lizzie's, Coach. Get you some – pick any kind of taco you want at 10 Lizzie's, Coach. Pick any taco you want, steak, chicken, veggie – any way you want it, tacos, Ten Lizzie's. So I'm gonna take you there, Coach, and get, show you that that good. That's spot. the one. That's the one off the east side downtown. That's, I've been there before. Oh, that's oh, one yeah. off the, on the east side by downtown. I've oh yeah, there. that's my spot. Believe baby. me, I, 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 I'm in them all now. That's my and last one for you, Coach. This. What is your favorite moment in, in Atlanta when you come to town here? What's been your, your favorite moment? It sticks out in your mind, Coach. It, it, it's hard to say, Jr. I've been I've been there so many times. I got so many wonderful friends uh, across the city. Um, I mean, it's just, it's too hard to say. It's too hard to say. I mean, going to Hawks games, Brave games, Falcons games, um, obviously it was an easy, you know, Auburn was basically a summer in Atlanta. So we, we lived in it. We lived in Atlanta all the time, but whether it's going to, to the gal, the, to Phillips Plaza, you know, taking a family drive, driving up, spending a great weekend in the city and, and, and going shopping and eating at all the restaurants. It's hard to put a finger on just one. Well, Coach, it's like coming to town. Please look me up, and I'm going to send John to give you my number. So we can have my number as well, Coach. We have it linked up, man. Uh, we got a lot to talk about Tennessee State and sports and the Hawks, man. I look forward to seeing you in person again. Coach, we, we've met at the tournament before in Nashville. We've met before. But now, but now we can meet, meet on a new level now. It's just to see you in passing in Nashville, the tournament up there. Absolutely, you have to take me some to some new restaurants. I don't know about because I know you got some you got some hole in the walls that I don't know about. I got you, Coach. I'm the man for you, Coach. I got you, buddy. All right, Jr. Thanks, Coach. Have a good one now. You too. Appreciate you. All right. All right.